your Locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 668 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and that song you're hearing right now is, of course, Leave the Lights On from our good friends in Pacifier. You can check those guys out anywhere you get your music. And today, you know, we had originally planned to come on here and talk about the second game, the Saturday game between the Ranger rookies and the Flyer rookies. And we still will eventually get to that, but we got to start today's episode with what else? The news that Nils Lundqvist has been shipped to the Dallas Stars. And this comes just one day after, you know, I did an episode kind of comparing and contrasting Nils Lundqvist against Zach Jones. If you guys remember, the two of them were battling for the sixth and final defenseman spot around this time last year. You fast forward one year later, and it's pretty amazing how much everything has changed for both these players. Jones now seems to potentially have the inside track to crack the opening night roster, whereas Nils Lundqvist uh, demanded a trade, went home, and now he has gotten his wish because he once again is going to the Dallas Stars in exchange for a conditional first-round pick next year, as well as a conditional fourth-round pick in 2025. I believe Shayna from The Athletic was the first person to get this story. Uh, but to dive deeper into you know the conditions here, as far as the picks are concerned, uh, so for the first-round pick, that's for next year's draft. And if the Stars have a first-round pick in the top 10, then they will get to hang on to that pick. It is top 10 protected, as the term is known. Uh, The Stars would hang on to the pick, and the Rangers would instead get the Stars' first-round pick in 2024, and that pick would be unprotected. So, theoretically, and I saw somebody tweet about this uh, on Twitter not too long ago, the Rangers could win the Stanley Cup in 2023, and then pick first in the 2024 NHL draft. I mean, we can only dream, right? But either way, I think it's a great, you know, move by Chris Jury here. Going to get to uh, the details why in just a second. Uh, But to continue talking about the conditions as far as these draft picks are concerned, here's another one. If Lundqvist produces 55 total points over the 2022-2023 and the 2023-2024 seasons, then Dallas will instead give away a third-round pick in 2025 to the Rangers rather than a fourth-round pick. So I guess in a roundabout way, we should actually be rooting for Nils Lundqvist to succeed, uh, at least from a points standpoint. And as far as the trade, look, on one hand, this kind of felt inevitable because Nils Lundqvist essentially forced the Rangers' hand. He went home, didn't report for rookie camp, said that he was not going to report for training camp either, and he was basically done with the Rangers. I mean, that's what it looked like, at least. And Of course, Jury didn't necessarily need to trade Lundqvist. He could have held on to him, played some hardball, and just basically refused to deal him away for less than he thinks he should be able to get for Nils Lundqvist. But by that same token, you had to figure that if Jury got what he considered to be a fair offer, then he would certainly pull the trigger. And that's exactly what has now taken place. Uh, Once again, Nils Lundqvist goes to the Dallas Stars. Rangers get a conditional first for next year and a conditional fourth for 2025. And I think this is another win for Chris Drury. I know when he first took over as the Ranger GM, some people weren't really sold on him. It was his first time in that role. I know that he made a lot of fans angry when he traded Pavel Buchnevich to St. Louis for Sammy Blay in a second. Uh, You combine that with the fact that I think a lot of Ranger fans just felt like Jeff Gordon should have still been the general manager. And then there was, of course, the signing of Patrick Nemeth. That one didn't work out either. So a shaky start for Chris Jury in his tenure as New York Ranger general manager. But he knocked it out of the park at the trade deadline last season. Picks up Andrew Kopp, Frank Vetrano, Tyler Mott, and Justin Braun. They all played, uh, you know, minor to major roles in the Rangers, making it as far as they did. And in my very humble opinion, he did not overpay for any of those players. I know some people are going to point at Andrew Kopp. But again, Kopp was an important part of this team down the stretch and into the playoffs and all the way to the Eastern Conference Final. And I think there's another win for Chris Jury. I think he did a heck of a job getting what he got in exchange for Nils Lundqvist. I was a little bit worried on, you know, what Nils Lundqvist could reasonably 
bring back for the Rangers if he was going to be traded. I figured a second rounder would be possible, if not likely, in exchange for Nils Lundqvist. I wasn't so sure that the Rangers could get a first rounder, though, so I'm very happy that they did. And there's a couple of reasons why I wasn't so sure that uh, Nils Lundqvist would get the Rangers a first. Uh, for starters, everyone knew at this point that the Rangers were looking to trade Nils Lundqvist. Nils Lundqvist went home, gave every indication that he was pretty much done with the Ranger organization. So right off the bat, before you even attempt to trade this guy, you've already lost some leverage because all the other teams around the NHL, if we know that Nils is unhappy and has demanded a trade, the other 31 teams are very well aware of that fact as well. Uh, secondly, Lundqvist didn't really play all that great during his 25-game stint with the Rangers this past season. Uh, for me, there were just times where it looked like the game was moving pretty fast on him, and you know there were times where that certainly showed. And additionally, uh, one of his greatest assets is his ability to quarterback the power play, and the Rangers don't really have a need for that when it comes to their defensemen because you look at the top unit, you've got Adam Fox. No one's going to argue with that. And then on the second unit, you could throw Jacob Trouba out there and also Ke'Andre Miller. Uh, so the Rangers right now are not really hurting for an offensive puck-moving defenseman that can quarterback the power play. I mean, it's nice to have you know a surplus of guys like that, but certainly you don't need Nils Lundqvist. The Raiders don't need a player of Nils Lundqvist's skill set as much as some other teams might need him, just based on the personnel that they have. And Something else to consider, even when Nils Lundqvist was on the second power play unit, because he did get uh, some looks with that unit last season, that unit, as we all know, was not getting a ton of ice time. So he never really got a chance to take advantage of one of the skills that he possesses. And as a result of that, you know, other teams didn't get to really see what Nils Lundqvist could do at the NHL level quarterbacking a power play because he just wasn't out there very often. So for all those reasons, I think Lundqvist's stock was down at least a little bit. And again, I was a little bit pessimistic that the Rangers could get a first, so I am more than happy that they indeed did just that, plus the fourth rounder in 2025. Uh, they trade him not just out of the division, but also out of the conference, so we don't have to worry about Nils Lundqvist uh, going to a division rival and burning the Rangers for the next decade plus or whatever it might be. Um, so that's a nice little bonus as well. He goes to the Dallas Stars. And uh, my understanding is that the 2023 draft class, next year's draft class, is just absolutely loaded. So it's a very, very good time for the Rangers to have two picks in the first round. Uh, of course, they didn't have any picks in the first round this past season. And it's also possible, you know, I just mentioned that they have the two picks in the first round next year. Also very, very possible that the Rangers use one or even both of those picks at or near the trade deadline this season to add a rental player or two for another playoff push and hopefully a deep run, hopefully a Stanley Cup run. So let the Patrick Kane rumors run wild. You know they're not going to go anywhere until uh, the trade deadline this season has come and gone. And at that point, Patrick Kane will either be a Ranger or he won't be. And the whole conversation can be put to bed at that point where he gets some finality around the deadline this season. Uh, you know, seeing those Lundqvist get traded like this, I mean, it is crazy to think he was the top or considered by many to be the top prospect in the Ranger organization right at this same point in the calendar just one year ago. So it is something of a fall from grace for Nils Lundqvist, I suppose. But in just a second, I'm actually going to talk about why I was okay with the Rangers making this move and giving away Nils Lundqvist for a first rounder and why I don't think it's something that's all that likely to come back and really, really haunt the Rangers. I don't think we're in a situation where we're going to look at this and think like, oh man, we really screwed that up bad. You know, Nils Lundqvist could be uh, the difference maker. If, if Nils Lundqvist was still here, this would be a Stanley Cup team. I don't think it's going to be anything like that, and in just a second, I will explain why. But first, I just want to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked on New York Rangers is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's Week 3 games. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, I just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. 
All right, we're going to do some more Nils Lundqvist talk in just a second here, but I wanted to very quickly, you know, given the fact that this trade was just struck yesterday, I want to quickly update everybody on Ranger draft picks as far as uh, next year is concerned. They have two first rounders. They have their own pick and now that of the Dallas Stars. They also have their own second round pick. They do not have their own third round pick, but they do have Colorado's third round pick. Uh, the Rangers do not have any picks in the fourth or fifth round. They have their own pick in the sixth round. They also have the Jets pick in the sixth round, and they have their own pick in the seventh round. Uh, but shifting back to Nils Lundqvist here and why I'm good with the Rangers moving him. Uh, for starters, and I touched on this in yesterday's episode, it just doesn't appear whether this is real or perceived, whether I'm being completely fair or not. And, you know, Nils Lundqvist has disputed this. He said he's not that kind of guy that, you know, is selfish or, you know, a me first kind of player or somebody that doesn't want to work with it. And more on that in a second. We'll get to some Nils Lundqvist quotes. Um, but, you know, on the surface, at least, it just seems like this kid doesn't have the right mindset. You know, I did the compare and contrast with him and Zach Jones and how it's just polar opposite. You know, Zach Jones is out there attending a rookie camp, which he was told he did not have to attend, while Nils Lundqvist, once again, is sitting at home. Um, as I mentioned yesterday... At this time last year, Nils Lundqvist, I know I've said it a couple times, but it's still just crazy to think about, considered the top prospect by very many people in this Ranger organization. And he was involved in the only other battle for a roster spot, and that was against Zach Jones, who I just mentioned. Uh, Nils Lundqvist won that battle despite Jones playing in 10 games the previous season and doing reasonably well. And uh, Nils then got to play in 25 games with the Rangers. He was sent down to the minors. I have to say rightfully so. I don't think that he played well enough to justify keep continuing to run him out there night in and night out when there are other guys that, you know, deserve a chance. And this is right when Nils Lundqvist demanded a trade. From the second that he was sent down to the AHL, without even apparently giving it a thought that, you know, hey, I could work my way back up there, I could get a chance at it, he demanded a trade, him and his uh, agent, Claude Lemieux. And we didn't get wind of this until just recently, but yes, it was right at that moment when he got sent down to the AHL that he demanded a trade. For me, at least, that's not the right mindset. I don't think it necessarily makes Nils Lundqvist a bad person, but again, the, the contrast between him and Zach Jones is staggering. The two guys that were, again, just one year ago, gunning for that final defenseman spot. Uh, with Zach Jones, you know, he got sent down last year. He didn't quit. He didn't throw a fit. He admitted he was disappointed, which to me is completely fine. You should be disappointed. If you're trying to make an opening night roster of an NHL team and you're right there and you're right on the cusp of doing exactly that and achieving your childhood dream and you don't make it, you have every right to be disappointed, to be mad, to be upset, but you have to handle it the right way. You have to, you know, go down to the minors with the right mindset and do everything you can to play good hockey and force your way back onto the NHL roster. And by all accounts, you know, Lundqvist didn't really play all that well with the Wolfpack when he got sent down this past season. So he demands his trade, he gets it, and this is where things stand right now. He's on his way to the Dallas Stars, and uh, pretty crazy to think, once again, top prospect in the organization to a member of the Dallas Stars in about one year's time. Uh, something else I have to mention about Nils Lundqvist and why I'm okay with the Rangers doing this is when you look at you know, how he's fared versus how some other young Ranger defensemen have fared. I mean, we can go all the way back to Adam Fox and Ryan Lindgren if we want to, um, but to kind of keep the focus on guys who have debuted a little bit more recently than those two, you could throw out uh, Keandre Miller. You know, obviously, he was a surprise addition to the opening night roster uh, just two years ago, played great, never looked back, and even more recently, I believe that Nils Lundqvist was outplayed by both Braden Schneider and Zach Jones. Now, of course, these guys have, you know, Jones, Schneider, and also Lundqvist, limited amount of time in the NHL. But, you know, just going by the eye test, I thought Braden Schneider and Zach Jones looked a little bit more ready for prime time, looked like they were ready to go, whereas Lundqvist, it felt like at times that his head was spinning at the start of last season. And Lundqvist, again, he got the first opportunity last year, he made the opening night roster, and they gave him some time. They gave him 25 games to show what he could do, to show some improvement, and to start to look like, you know, he belonged, and he was going to be a key member of this team that, you know, got off to a good start last season and was seemingly going to be a playoff team. And of course, that's exactly what happened. Uh, Nils Lundqvist didn't really, to me at least, show a ton of improvement in those 25 games. I do not believe for a second that the Rangers treated him unfairly. You know, they didn't have him on the opening night roster and then send him down after like three or four games. They gave him nearly a third of the season to kind of cement himself in the roster. He wasn't able to do it. They sent him down. 
Brayden Schneider, I think, rightfully got the next crack at it, and I thought he did far better than Nils Lundqvist. Like, you know, is there anybody listening to this who wishes that the Rangers went into the playoffs last year with Nils Lundqvist in the lineup instead of Braden Schneider? Probably not. And I don't want to speak for everybody, but probably not. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people are going to point to the fact that Nils Lundqvist, oh, man, he was out there with Patrick Nemeth. What do you expect him to do? I hear you. You know, I watched Patrick Nemeth last season, too. And, uh, you know, obviously that's, I mean, I'm not trying to be mean here, but that is a tough way to make your debut when you're a rookie NHL defenseman uh, being paired with, you know, last year's version of Patrick Nemeth, who obviously did not fare well with the Rangers and is now a member of the Arizona Coyotes. But I have to be fair here. Brandon Schneider was paired with Patrick Nemeth, too, when he first came up. And Schneider found a way to make it work, found a way to stick in the lineup, uh, won over the coaching staff, I think, with his physicality and his smarts, and, uh, you know, just a more solid all-around game. And again, just the eye test, just watching these guys go about their business, who looks like they're ready to go, who looks like they belong. It was Braden Schneider. It was not Nils Lundqvist. And I think even Zach Jones, you know, he played 12 games with the Rangers last year, 10 games the season before that. I think even Zach Jones passed the eye test at least a little bit more than Nils Lundqvist. You guys can net, let me know if you think that I'm being unfair here. But in my very, very humble opinion, that's just the way I felt watching all three of these guys uh, play hockey last season, and in Jones's case, uh, even the season before that as well. But the biggest reason why, you know, I'm pretty much cool with this move, you know, getting a first rounder for Nils Lundqvist, and I'm, I'm ready to turn the page here and basically never look back, is it, it's basically the same issue that Nils Lundqvist himself saw, and I think a lot of you guys see it as well. Where are you going to put Nils Lundqvist? You know, he's a right defenseman. It's not to say he can't possibly play the left side, but when you look at the Ranger depth chart right now, Adam Fox on the top pairing, Jacob Truba on the second pairing. I don't think I really need to explain to you guys why those two players are going to be in the lineup night in and night out. And then Braden Schneider, very promising rookie campaign this past season. He's on the third pairing on the right side. So where do you put Lundqvist? Now, of course, Lundqvist, the one solution could be, well, move him to the left side, uh, give him a shot there, and he can compete for that sixth and final defenseman spot. Look, that option was on the table for Nils Lundqvist. He chose not to take it. Maybe he doesn't want to switch sides. Maybe he doesn't feel like he can switch sides. I don't know. At this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, bottom line is Nils Lundqvist didn't take that opportunity to compete for the sixth and final defenseman spot and uh, demand the trade, and he gets what he wants now. And as far as what Nils Lundqvist himself had to say for this, I got a couple of quotes here from various articles, and uh, this is what he had to say. I understand that you have to fight your way up, but I couldn't really see a way forward for me, so a trade felt like the best solution. And then he went on to say, that's not how I want to appear. People can, of course, believe what they want, but those who know me know that I am not like that. And that was in response to, you know, certain people, fans, whatever it might be, uh, who have the perception that Nils Lundqvist is kind of being selfish, a little bit of a me first kind of guy and, and somebody that's not willing to work for. And only time's going to tell. I mean, look, he's got to go to work for the Dallas Stars. He's, he's getting exactly what he wanted, a change of scenery, presumably a opportunity to be out there on opening night. So he's got to bring it. He's got to go to work and only time is going to tell um, if that's true or not. You know, it, whether he is kind of a me first guy or whether he's a team first guy. And he'll have every opportunity to prove that with the Dallas Stars, it would certainly seem. And, you know, to kind of just put a bow on this whole thing, a trade was probably best for everyone. I think it's going to be interesting to see how he's used in Dallas. You know, does he quarterback the top power play unit? Is he immediately in a top four role? Uh, how much ice time will he get per night? Definitely going to be keeping an eye on it because I'm very, very curious to see if the Stars will just kind of throw him into the fire and, you know, put him in a top four role and have him doing the power play and all that good stuff. Or if, you know, he's going to have to climb his way up the ranks in Dallas as well. I would think it would probably be the former. Uh, it seems like the Stars, you know, if they're giving up a first rounder for him, they're probably pretty happy to have him. And I would imagine that they would give him a pretty prominent role right from the get-go. Uh, but he's got a great shot, an absolute missile. And uh, hopefully for Nils Lundqvist, it goes better for him in Dallas than it did in New York. In some ways, he was a victim of circumstance with the Rangers, you know, with all the right defensemen ahead of him on the depth chart. By that same token, I still think he could have showed up for rookie camp and, you know, training camp and competed for that final defenseman spot and just tried to keep grinding. And he chose not to do that. And we have our trade. Nils Lundqvist to Dallas, 
for a first rounder and a fourth rounder, both conditional. And for anybody wondering, the Rangers first play the Stars this upcoming season at 2 p.m. on Saturday, October 29th in Dallas. So we'll see if Nils Lundqvist does what every former Ranger does and has a revenge game against his former team or if the Rangers uh, kind of shut him down. Uh, but as promised, you know, I, I, this was going to be originally kind of uh, the main thing that we were going to do on today's episode. But in just a second, we're going to get to some news and notes from the Saturday scrimmage between the Ranger rookies and the Flyer rookies. And we will do that in just a second. All right, turning our attention to Saturday scrimmage, the Ranger rookies against the Flyer rookies. The Rangers lose this one by a score of 5-1. to one. This was one day after the Ranger rookies also lost to the Flyer rookies uh, by a score of 2-1 to one in overtime. And let me just preface this whole thing by saying that this shouldn't really be cause for alarm for anyone. I mean, obviously, it would have been really nice to win. It's still Rangers Flyers to some extent. But, you know, these rookies, they're still getting their feet wet. Probably a bunch of them are all meeting one another for the first time, and, you know, teams are more concerned with watching their players perform than they are with the final score, I think. Um, so it's very similar to, you know, just a standard NHL preseason game in that way. But with that said, uh, why don't we go ahead and dive right into it. Again, just some news and notes from the whole thing, and uh, let's go ahead and collectively, and I include myself in this, overanalyze the line combinations. They were a little bit different uh, from Friday's scrimmage. Uh, the top line, now Ryder Korzak at center, centering Brandon Othman on on the left wing, Lori Pahuniemi on the right wing. And the second line is Kodorenko at center, uh, Will Cooley at the left wing, Adam Sakura on the right wing. And I, yeah, the first game, it was Offman, Kodorenko, and Sakura. So they switched that up a little bit. The third line is Henriksen at center, uh, Trevino at the left wing, Barbashev at the right wing. And then the fourth line, McConnell Barker centering Edstrom on his left wing and Remp on his right wing. And the defense pairings, Jones and Emerson, and then Robertson and Scanlon, and then Skinner and Hano. So for anybody who might be interested in this, you know how the Rangers, obviously, before every game, you'll have somebody reading the starting lineup card. For anybody who's interested in who got that honor among this rookie team, it was Matthew Robertson. He got to read the starting lineup card in the locker room. Uh, the Rangers actually posted that video on Twitter, so you can check that out if you'd like. And Robertson and Jones, sounds like they both played well over this two-game stretch here, and they continue to battle for an opening night roster spot. Of course, there could be a dark horse that swoops in and gets that sixth defense in spot. But I think the smart money right now is once again on either Zach Jones or Matthew Robertson. We will see. Uh, Zach Jones got to quarterback the top power play unit. Matthew Robertson continued to play on both sides of the ice, left defense and right defense. Robertson typically a left defenseman, but uh, you know it sounds like early in this camp, they had both Jones and Robertson uh, playing both sides, which is interesting, but also not really all that surprising. I mean, Having a little bit of versatility never hurt anybody. And hey, that's what these scrimmages are for. That's what these practices are for. That's what training camp is for. You know, messing around with this stuff and, um, you know, seeing what these players can do when put into different situations and different roles. Um, by most accounts, the Rangers outshot the Flyers in this game despite losing 5-1 to one, and despite being outshot themselves by double digits in the game prior. I did not see an official shot total, but I'm just going by the general consensus of those who were there. Uh, you know, this game was actually broadcast. It was on some random, obscure streaming service. I don't know. You have to have an, a subscription to NBC SP+. Plus. I don't know what that is. I don't know how to order it. I've never heard of it. I'll probably never hear of it again after today. It really is ridiculous how hard it is to just sit down and watch this stuff. And frankly, we've all got a bunch of headaches coming our way in uh, just a few weeks here when we're all trying to figure out what channel the Rangers are on, what streaming service do I need for that? Can I order a free trial and then just cancel it a few days later? It's just never easy anymore. Drives you crazy. I can't be the only one. But yeah, me ran over uh, back to the uh, Saturday game here. Uh Sounds like Bobby Trevino had a strong showing on Saturday. He's a very undersized forward, to put it mildly. He is just five foot eight and 161 pounds. He scored the Rangers' only goal on Saturday. Apparently, he went in on a two-on-one. Uh, sounds like the pass was taken away from him. You know, the defenseman was in the way. And so he just ripped it from the left circle, and he scored. And it also sounds like it was a little bit of a rough evening for the Ranger goalies. You had Olaf Lindblom playing... The first half of the game, he gave up three goals, and then Talon Boyko gave up two goals after that. So not an ideal night for the Ranger netminders, or at least the ones who played. Um, not a ton of high-danger scoring chances for the New York Rangers. 
Uh, but again, shifting our attention back to Bobby Trevino, because he was uh, somebody that stood out in a positive way for the Rangers, scored the only goal of the game for the Rangers. Uh, he is, for anybody that needs a refresher, 23 years old, signed with the Rangers this offseason after being named the College Hockey News' Player of the Year. Uh, that was for his senior season at UMass, where he was the team captain and picked up 20 goals and 29 assists in just 37 games. He also played in 11 games at the Wolfpack last year, had one goal and two assists, Seems like a little bit of a long shot to make the Ranger roster, but never say never if he does make it, you know, given the fact that he is kind of a undersized forward, but does play with a lot of grit and a lot of tenacity. I could see him uh, potentially becoming a popular player. Uh, we shall see. Then again, uh, you know, if Trevino is there and guys like Offen and Cooley aren't, then we all know how this goes. Everybody's going to be, you know, why is this Trevino kid out there? We don't have one of our top prospects out there instead. So we'll see. But again, I, I just think his playing style and the fact that he is undersized but plays a lot bigger than his frame, I think that he would uh, have a good chance of endearing himself to New York Ranger fans. Uh, and then as far as, you know, Trevino, what he had to say after the game, he said, I know it's just a rookie game. Growing up a Rangers fan, ever since I knew hockey, it's huge for me and special for my family to put on that jersey for the first time. And yeah, I can only imagine Trevino, once again, you know, he was a Ranger fan growing up and a uh, very, very cool moment for him to get to play for his childhood team. And like I said, a little bit of a long shot, a little bit of an underdog, but we'll see how the whole thing shakes out. And if he doesn't make the Rangers, I would imagine probably start the season once again with the Hartford Wolfpack. Uh, I figure we could pretty much call it there for today. Just some general hockey news, though. Uh, apparently, this was defenseman retirement day because P.K. Subban, Zdeno Chara, and former Ranger Keith Yandel all announced their retirements from the NHL. I always liked Yandel. I've toyed around with this idea of doing uh, an episode at some point. Probably not all that soon because we've got Ranger hockey coming up. But I eventually want to do an episode where I pretty much just do a list of Ranger players that I liked more than most Ranger fans did. And I got to say, Keith Yandel would be pretty high on that list. I thought uh, he did a great job. Nice complimentary player for a team that had very good defensemen, but for the most part, a lot of stay-at-home defensemen. And Yandel, being an offensive defenseman, complimented that group very, very well. Always thought he was a good teammate. Did a great job quarterbacking the power play. Great passer. I liked Yandel. He was only here for a year and a half, but I think I liked him more than a lot of Ranger fans did. As far as fantasy hockey is concerned, bear with me. Uh, we've got people that played from last season that have already secured their spots. And today, or in the next couple of days here, going to be sending out some invites to people that did not play last season in the order that they contacted me. So just bear with me on that. We will get to that eventually. Uh, but that will pretty much do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Thanks for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. In our next episode, we're going to be talking with Constantine, who was the runner-up in last season's Locked On New York Rangers Fantasy League. Now make your second listen, Locked On NHL. Locked On Experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked On NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast.